Recording with Brian Andrews, Jeff Wilson, and my good friend Gene O'Neill. Gene O'Neill is just, you know, Gene O'Neill is an audio technical expert. Now, but one thing about the protectors is we are pretty much, you know, we're we're grassroots, we're we're bare bones, and we 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 try to get good content out to everybody. And I really appreciate the support from everybody out there. And I really, really, really appreciate Brian and Jeff coming back on the show. How many appearances is this now, guys? I don't know. I feel like I feel like we hang out with you every weekend or something. Like it's almost I'm like four or five. Yeah, four or five. It's like guys' night now. But sometimes we're on the a book club. Oh yeah, we got the book club. We got the lives. We got all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know. I, I really I need to go back for a little while. This show we haven't been here for a while. It's the Protector season four. Can you believe it? Like three hundred something episodes now. I think two hundred seventy. Yeah, two hundred seventy something are on podcast in like 300 video it's crazy man congrats Beautiful. man that's 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 a big milestone that's impressive. you know you know what's even a bigger milestone is having the names andrews and wilson <laughs> on web griffin that is incredible and and congrats and much 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 kudos to you both thanks yeah it's thanks. exciting it's exciting now, how does something like that work out? You know, the, you have the estate, you have W.E.B. Griffin Estate, and you're like, hey, you know what? Um, we want to continue this. We want to keep this going. Do they reach out to you or, or do you hear under the grapevine that says, hey, you know what? I hear something going on. Yeah. So I, every there's a lot of these deals out now, right? The, the legacy series thing has become a big industry um, with, you know, the Bourne series and Clancy and other Ludlum products and um, so my guess is every single deal is different. I can just tell you about ours. We, we knew Tom from Thriller Fest from New York, uh, and had become friends with him. And over a year or so of uh, chatting, we'd always talked about, you know, wanting to do something together and he wanted us to do something. And he gave us a call one day and said, uh, Hey, I want to talk to you. And we went to dinner and he dropped that bomb on us. Like, uh, so we're going to be doing this thing, you know, um, WB Griffin had passed away in February of 19 and, uh, the estate wanted to continue this series in particular. So for, in our case, it was Tom Colgan. He was working with the estate. He recommended us. He thought we would be the ones. And so he's the one that hired us uh, to do it. Um, but I'm sure every deal is every deal is different. But that's how it happened for us. Yeah. Tom Colgan with his his pandemic and now his regular journal. I give a lot. I get a big shout out to him because when I had some questions about you know presenting queries and everything else and about the book industry when i was reaching out to authors he was boom right there good dude and he's, he, he he knows a lot he knows he's he's the in and out of the industry yeah yeah he's like uh you know just an icon because he was tom clancy's editor right so oh, wow. he's you know he's telling us stories about clancy and about griffin you know who was William Edmund Butterworth actually is his real name, but he's telling us stories about him. And, you know, he, he, he used to work with all these guys. So really cool. Back when they would send manuscripts in with, you know, typewriters. Yeah. And, and right. papers For and, real. <laughs> and multiple copies. Right. When, when a galley came contained in a box. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You send it in a box. Crazy. You send your galley in a box. It is, uh, uh, I mean, the, the presidential agent series, I've been following it since the beginning. One of the, one of the real great parts about coming on with Jason and, and folks like you is I'm not an author. Uh, I'm a consumer of, of your product and, and having a medium in which we can discuss that product is, is it, it, it means a terrific amount to me. We're, we're coming this is book nine we see the, with Charlie Castillo and uh, he has had quite a ride up until this point. I mean, we, we go from the poorest rich kid in Germany to working directly for the president. And then uh, this atmosphere of uh, the entire thing being a caper. That's, that's really what, what, what uh, Griffith did with that. Um, and it, it must be daunting to take that over. 
Yeah, that's a big part of it, Gene, for sure. Is like, you know, well, it's it actually it's a two stage process. I think Brian will back me up on this. Stage one is elation and excitement. Like you're so flattered uh, to have someone like Tom invite you to write for such a legend, and you're like, wow, we're we're a big deal that they would ask us to do it. And then when all that sort of goes away and reality sets in, you're like, how on earth do you measure up to write for a legend like? like Griffin, like it, it was, I, I'll be honest, I think for both of us, we had that moment where it was like, man, we've made a mistake. Like this is overwhelming. Um, but Colgan was great. Tom gave us the best advice. Uh, we've said this on a couple other interviews and that advice is he says the same thing he shares with all his estate authors, you know, Mark Greeny and Josh Hood and Cameron and all these guys. He said, look, you know, don't try to write Griffin. You can't, no one can write Griffin except Griffin. He's the only one that can do it. But what you can do is write, you know, Andrews and Wilson. You guys are good writers. We love the way you write. We love your style. Write in your style, but just try to honor the universe and the characters and the relationships that uh, that Griffin had created. And that was liberating, right, Brian? Like that was like a weight off your shoulders when that happened. Yeah, the last thing you want to be doing is worrying, looking over your shoulder, like, oh, you know, I'm trying to write just like this other guy. Am I getting this right? And I think confidence is a big part of being successful as an author. You know, you, if you're not confident in what you're writing, it's going to come through on the page and people are going to pick up on it. You know, they say, you know, animals can smell fear. I think that readers can smell confidence. And so for us, we needed to have our swagger. We needed to be able to tell the types of stories that we know how to tell. And so we needed that from Tom to be sort of liberated and given permission to go, hey, go, go write this book the best way to that you guys know how, and that's what we tried to do. From my point of view, the the, the presidential agent series is uh, a family drama forced through the filter of a thriller. There's always some kind of family issue that Charlie's dealing with while he's dealing with saving the world. And that was one of the unique things about that series um, compared to, to, to Griffin's other stuff, the badge of honor stuff, the clandestine agent stuff. It is, uh, it, it, it's, and I remember when Atkins picked up for Robert B. Parker and I worried about the, uh, the dialogue changing and, and you really can't tell the difference, but you can tell there's a different writer. He's just doing him like as you've mentioned and and that is uh it's i i i salute you for doing it it's it, nine books in that's that's a lot do you research do you, do you do you spend a lot of time in the past work to build what's happening in the future or you just cuz charlie's getting a little long in the tooth for special operations work yeah we had to make a decision did we want to pick up book 9 like a few months after book 8 ended or did we want to you know go ahead and age him in correlation with the real time gap that's occurred. And uh, we came to this, we had a long discussion with Tom about this, but the decision was made that we're going to go ahead and age the series because geopolitically the world is a very different place than it was eight years ago. And to try to go back and write things, I think the way that they were right in the world of eight years ago, uh, especially the savvy readers that are reading, you know, our con contemporary, you uh, thriller authors and, and the like, they're going to, that'd be a red flag. They'd be like, well, this, this doesn't feel right. This isn't what the world is like today. So it was an opportunity for us to bring Charlie Ford, have him operating in a different geopolitical environment, but also, you know, aging out is a very um, real and emotionally and professionally difficult thing to deal with. Right. So we got to work that into his character in this uh, story arc. Well, cool. Yeah. And that was sort of, you know, you mentioned, Gene, the, you know, always there were the relationships and the family issues and stuff like that. In this first book, as we, you know, after eight years reintroduce, we had to make another decision, which is how much of the how much of the other characters do you bring back? And um, the daunting task there was if we brought back this entire merry band of outlaws, we got to account in the narrative for that eight year of backstory for every single character. And it would have been so overwhelming and bogging down and pace killing that we decided that for the first one, let's just focus on Charlie and get him up to speed. 
But our way to sort of introduce that element that Griffin was so good at in this series was through uh, Charlie and this new kid, Pick McCoy. His, you know, now he's looking at having to mentor someone. And Charlie is not, not he's not that guy, right? He's the guy, he's a team guy, but he does what, what Charlie does. He's not looking to teach his replacement. And so we were able to sort of flesh out a family dynamic, if you will, through that relationship of the young kid and the older guy. And, you know, Pick is looking at him as an old fossil and he's looking at him as a wet behind the ears kid and watching them come together in their relationship until they got to that point of mutual respect was sort of the way that we honored that, that element of the presidential agent series. I was glad you picked that up. I, I, I literally can't wait for it. It's uh, yeah, I've been kind of really looking forward to seeing this series picked up by, by, by a team that would, or a person that would treat it as uh, with the respect it deserves. Well, hopefully we're there. <laughs> well, if it's anything like the tier one series, it's, it's going to really knock it out of the park. That's one of my best series. You know, I, 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 I'm always torn between Jack Carr's books and your books there. I'm just, and that's one of the other reasons I want to have Gene on because we're both like really, you know, I don't know if Gene has read the tier one series, but he's gonna, because you will absolutely love it because it's, it's really it's it's one of the top series out there. Okay. It'll always be one of the top series out there. I don't care if you come up with Dark Intercept, Sons of Valors, or anything. It's going to be one of the top series for me. So what are that we? Means gonna, a lot, thanks, man. Yeah. So one thing that has happened since the last time we talked, and this is kind of off topic of the W. E. B. Griffin. I got to keep saying it because it's unbelievable. Because I, I read those books so much in the '90s. You know the the Brotherhood of the Brotherhood and the Police series and everything like that. I love it. Um, but John Rich, how did you guys link up with John Rich? <laughs> hey, where's my bottle of whiskey? Where's Gene's <laughs> bottle of whiskey? What's going on around here? That's a, that's a fun story. It's, it was just one of those, um, you know, crossing stars type thing. It was not, not something that happened with any intentionality on either side, but we're fans of John, not just his music, but just him as a person. He's such an American patriot. He's such a supporter of military and law enforcement, everything he does is to give back to those communities. And as a result, we were uh, in in one of our books, the first Sons of Valor book, we were writing in the checkpoint call signs, right, for an operation. And we decided to go with whiskeys. And so one of the teammates decided, oh, yeah, well, we got to make the jackpot redneck riviera because that guy is the best and he's like loves the military so we wrote him and his whiskey into the book and then uh we sent him a book uh as a thank you for his patriotism and it just tickled him to, to have the whiskey in the book you know he went on and on about of course what else would a navy seal drink except for redneck riviera and um from that conversation came up this idea of developing a Sons of Valor cocktail to be served at his bar in Nashville uh, with the uh, goal of raising awareness for our two favorite charities. He's a huge supporter of Folds of Honor, as you know. We support Seal Legacy Foundation. And so we launched this campaign and then the giveaway and the signed guitar and all that stuff as a way that we could combine our forces to raise awareness for these two great charities. But I got to tell you, he's an amazing human being. He is one of the most down to earth people we've ever met. We had the best time hanging out with him and drinking a Sons of Valor cocktail at 10 o'clock in the morning. And there's, there's more to it, but we'll leave it at that. This episode brought to you by health to the rescue. Yep. Sniffly it's sniffly season. It's fall. You know what that means? Actually, I think it's winter. It's getting crazy out there. So you need vitamin D, you need vitamins, you need supplements. You got to keep your health up. My go-to is vitamin D to the rescue, which is also health to the rescue.com head over to health to the rescue. Check them out. If you sign up for their email, you get 20% off your first order and you know, get this. They also use proceeds to help fight human trafficking. So every bottle you buy five bucks goes to helping fight human trafficking and they'll donate to causes, legit causes. They donate to one of the companies I am currently helping out is deliver fund. So make sure you head over and check out healthtotherescue.com. This show brought to you by Faraday Defense. Head to shop.faradaydefense.com. 
Now, next month, I'm heading out to Vegas. Yep, big old Las Vegas. I'm going to a trade show. It's called SHOT Show. And one thing about SHOT Show, it's in Vegas. So what happens in Vegas? A lot of things get hacked. Or what I should say is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But a lot of times it doesn't because your technical information, your credit cards, your laptops, your mobile devices can get hacked. So Faraday Defense has these awesome products. They have dry bags. They have regular bags. They have sleeves. Anything you could put your electronic equipment in to protect the signature. They have everything from bags up to tents to cloth, everything you need to protect yourself from hackers and all sorts of other nefarious actors out there. So check out shop.faradaydefense.com. Yeah, this is a guy that, you know, he walks in the room and he knows everybody's name. Hey, Chris. Hey, Beth. Hey, you know, he, he knows everybody that works for him. He handpicks his staff. Uh, he has time for everybody. I mean, we thought maybe, you know, we'd, we'd get in there and he'd be like, yeah, I got uh, five minutes for you guys and, and I'm out of here. And it'd be brusque. And nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, shook his hand, sitting there talking, telling us about the bar. He's very creative. You know, we were shooting these promo videos and he's like coming up with a script on the fly with us and very funny. And, yeah, he is. Uh, and you know, and then he's continued. We, we, die, we trade emails from time to time. He's just a really, really good guy. So everything you see is what you get with him. Yeah. So, um, that's refreshing. I see a protector's interview with John Rich and us in the future. Be cool. Oh, huh? <laughs> I think uh, these two guys named Brian Andrews and Jeff Wilson should probably link us up. What's up, John Rich? Let's do there this. you go. You have another big thing going on, and I am absolutely ecstatic. I don't know if that's a really a good word for it. I'm just, I'm really, really happy and and just joyful because it's really one of those things that touches my heart. Because if ever anybody's ever looked behind me, I have one, two, three, four, five combat flags behind me. And I'm really good friends with Dan. I don't, I'm somehow I made friends with Dan from combat flags before I started the podcast. I think it just had to be an affinity of, I just love flags. Uh, my montage is always, you can never have too many knives, guns and, and hats, but it's also, I just love the American flag. So when I first met Dan, he, you know, he said, Hey, ship me one of your uniforms, one of your combat uniforms. And I sent him one of my uniforms and he made me a combat flag. And I have one of the original ones behind me up there somewhere. I'll show you guys later on. And he puts, you know, a little snapshot of my career on there. And I was like, I'm so honored because now I have something to hand down to my kids. You know, he took, he gave me about three or four different sets. And it's just one of those things where it's like, it's just an incredible avenue of, you know, memorial but also raise awareness and stuff like that and you guys are partnered up with him now right yeah no it's fantastic i mean uh, i just think it's incredible that he came up with this idea and he was the first person to do this too i mean uh, so what an innovator and uh, he's got so much heart and and for those of you who are listening you know the combat flag is like like uh, jason was saying you take the uniform of the service member and he makes it into a three by five flag and so in our case, we're the first ones that it's two uniforms. So the combination of Jeff's and my uniforms make the Andrews and Wilson combat flag. And we were just, just honored that he wanted to do this for us. Um, so all of our proceeds go to Seal Legacy and then Dan's, you know, his proceeds go to um, uh, preventing su soldier suicide. So uh, it's, it's a really righteous mission and very creative. Yeah, stop soldier suicide is one thing that Dan is very passionate about. And I don't even, it's like in the tens of thousands of dollars that he has yeah. donated to them. And yeah. Dan does this out of his house. This isn't like some big corporate gig where he's like, you know, importing in, you know, a sweatshop in Mexico somewhere. He's doing it from his, his room. He's got his family there and he's, he's doing it at night when he's done with his corporate gig. And he's also a veteran himself. Right. Yeah, and just an amazing human being, such a big heart. In fact, um, anyone listening, if you're curious about just how how you go from a you know a couple uniforms to something as beautiful as this, he actually created a video uh, that mm -hmm. I think you can see through our. It's on our. Is it on our website yet, Brian? Uh, there's a link. There's a link on our website. So if you go to andrews-wilson.com, uh, first of all, you can get information about how to get an Andrews and Wilson flag from Combat Flags to help support these charities. 
but also there's a link you can click and it it's like a time abbreviated thing that shows the whole process from taking the shears and cutting the uniforms in half all the way through the process that ends up in these beautiful flags. You, you know, on the video, you can't really appreciate the weight and quality of these things. They're just incredible. And he does so many things. I got to show you this one. Um, you may have, you may have this one as well, Jason, but look at this flag. Yep. I mean, isn't mm -hmm. that, it's, it's gorgeous, right? They're just beautiful, beautiful project or products worth having. But then when you find out that, you know, his heart is to support, you know, his fellow veterans and prevent soldier suicide, it's a no brainer, right? It's an easy, easy thing to get behind. There are, there, there are so many businesses out there today that are using the, 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 the veteran entrepreneurship and turning that and re, uh, in, into a profit and then returning that profit to the community, whether it's suicide, whether you look at there are just so many veteran owned businesses out there today that, and, and we try and support them all. It's it, the, the way they give back is not like any other business. They're, they're not like any other business owner. It's not like they're sponsoring a little league team, which is really great. But when you, when you look at causes like veteran suicide, burn pit, um, uh, ongoing cancers and, 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 and all that, 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 that community is really helping you. You can't help but get behind it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think you you really keyed on something there, Gene, which is this idea that you know for the veteran entrepreneurs, it's not just about starting a business, right? It's not just about profit. It's about hey, how can I employ other veterans? How can I bring awareness to things that you know are affecting my fellow servicemen and women after their tours? Because two decades of conflict, we've got PTSD, we've got all kinds of other issues, like you were saying, health issues and stuff. And this is, we have a whole generation now of um, veterans who have been engaged in combat uh, operations for so long, the longest in, in recent history, that now, you know, the support systems, uh, we've realized there's some gaps in them, right? So you've got the Slatterly's with the All Secure Foundation. That's another one that we like to partner with and, and talk about because, they bring awareness and 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 they bring they also bring funding and help on the on the PTS uh, side as well. So uh, yeah, any any opportunity we have to spread the word about these amazing ventures, we we try to do that. Yeah, I want to actually just give a quick plug for Tom and Jen at and All Secure. I know you've talked about them before, Jason, because what they do is a little unique. Um, you know, they take they look at PTS as from a family and marriage unit perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than we need to get that guy fixed so we'll all be OK, it's partnering as a family. It's a, it's a beautiful concept that I think Jen was behind. You know, it's you can't just send your husband off or your wife off to get fixed while you sit at home and wait for them to come back better. It's got to be something you do together. And uh, the, the books that both of them have written and the work that that foundation is doing is saving not just veterans, but it's saving families. It's saving marriages. It's saving children. Mm -hmm. They they coined this idea of secondary PTS, the, the post-traumatic stress that a, that a spouse or a child suffers when they live in a household of someone who's struggling with these things. So yeah, huge shout out to, to the Satterleys and the incredible work that they're doing, man. Any, anybody that's out there, if you can go to allsecurefoundation.com and, and su support them however you can. Really amazing work. Yeah, and Tom's got a really good book out there too. Yeah. All Secure, yeah, yeah. You know. It's here somewhere. It's I know it's <laughs> it's it's over there. And what it's, the, well, it's behind the, these amazing books here. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. All secure, Tom. Yeah, I, I got to have those have to have those guys back on too because I do. You know what? There is so much that comes with the job, whether that's law enforcement, military that affects the family. I mean, we all know it, and I'm glad that it's getting the recognition. But the problem is, it took 20 years. Yeah, people yeah. To, to get the recognition out there. And we all knew before, right? But uh, getting it out mainstream and getting the bureaucracy to support it has been something that took yes. the first 10 years of this 20 years was spooling that up. And it's better now than it was. But Wendy, I don't know if she would agree with this, but I will tell you that the sacrifices Wendy made far exceed anything I did. Because you know how it is, guys, when you're downrange, you know you're okay. Or you know mm -hmm. you're not, but at least you know. <laughs> that not knowing... I think is 
an enormous source of stress and probably a, a source of primary PTS that is underappreciated and underdiagnosed. So yeah, I love to see things like the Satterleys and there's other organizations out there supporting the families. It's one of the reasons we support SEAL Legacy because their, mi their mission is so focused on family. Yeah, they support the team guys, but it's all about you know, the wives and the children that are left behind when the ultimate sacrifice has been made or when the service member is struggling with some serious issues. They've got scholarships for all these kids. They've done millions of dollars in scholarships since 2011. Um, they have a cool program, Jason, um, that is very unique where, hey, you know, you can't you don't have money. You don't have money to support us. That's fine. Can you be the person that goes to the softball game and cheers that kid on because dad's not there? Mm -hmm. Can you take the, the little girl to the daddy daughter dance because dad's deployed or dad's no longer with us? Isn't that a cool concept? Like we yeah. as a community coming in and supporting a family. Um, so seal again, just like, just like all secure seal legacy gets it. They get that this is a sacrifice that is made by a family, not just by an individual. And, yeah, and that it's great. not all about money and it's, it's not, not all about money. It's not necessarily how much coin you can come off across the table with it. There's something everyone can do. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I try to vet as much as possible, the organizations that I support and on behalf of the protector, seeing as this episode is actually sponsored, uh, I will donate $50 to the seal legacy foundation today. There awesome. we go. 50, I'm writing it down on my, my little notebook. Cause I forget everything. Awesome. And they're watching. So they're going to see if that check comes through, bro. <laughs> they're probably listening right now so, i mean there is there's an amazon alexa in here so someone's getting a notification right now i know when i go to my facebook feed it's going to be all about seals and everything else um this episode will air after the army and navy game so i'm so sorry well, that i'm so navy, sorry for army got you the gonna navy get lost get over and, yeah. let's go let's go with some scores i'm gonna go army uh 28 Navy 14. Well, that was very generous of you, Jason. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not giving you an exact score, but I'll give you a spread. It'll, it'll be Navy by 10. You know what? I'll go army by, <laughs> by seven, just like I just said. <laughs> well, then Gene, I'm what do you got? Gene, what I'm going got? Navy by 43. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a basketball <laughs> score. Well, oh you know. my gosh. In, in 2002, the Army-Navy game came back to New Jersey. We played at a Giants game. It was, uh, it was one of the first national security events that the Secret Service tried to wrap their arms around. He said there wasn't a convention. And uh, all I remember is being up for about 27 hours. So I'm going to go Army by seven. Boom. See, that's the reason I, I brought Gene on the show today. So you both say army by seven. So I'm going to tell you what, yes. if, if it's army by seven, you're mm -hmm. both getting some sort of, I don't know what we'll go through or see what we have available. We'll get, everybody's getting a hat or a shirt or something. You guys uh, are so both, our redneck Riviera. What's up? You got you to get the, you got to get the, we wind. can't ship the liquor. Uh, well, I guess, Hey, we'll have to come there and get it. There are laws. <laughs> Well, we'll all meet in Kansas and eat and drink Brian's whiskey. There yeah. we go. Well, <laughs> gentlemen, I really appreciate you coming on. And before I forget, we talked about Dan and we talked about Combat Flags, but Dan also has a podcast called the Combat Flags Podcast. Please head over there, subscribe, give him a review. While you're there, just click over and subscribe and give a review of this one. Why not? Um, make sure you check out Rogue Asset. It's going to be the biggest book of the year. Buy it in all and the formats. All the formats, you know, if all you the bring it on your Kindle, so you can look on your phone, bring the hard copy with you, listen to it. It's going to be incredible. Gentlemen, before I say goodbye, I do want to give a big shout out to Deliver Fund. Deliverfund.org sponsors this show, sponsors me. They provide a lot of input to a lot of my articles, my op-eds and everything else. They are on the forefront of fighting human traffickers. And no, they're not vigilantes. I always say that they're not like these, these, uh, spur of the moment hey we're going to go quote unquote rescue children by breaking our doors no they're providing direct intelligence support to the law enforcement they're made up of former intelligence former military and former this and former that but they are professionals at hunting human traffickers make sure you check out deliverfund.org like share do what you can with them as well they sell merch like i'm wearing a cool hat right now 
But gentlemen, back to you. I appreciate you coming on the show, and I really appreciate Gene stepping in today and helping out. Yeah, Gene, great to meet you, man. Thanks for being here with us. Wonderful. I, I really, I really appreciate the time we were able to spend.